How's it going? Fox again for Sound Design Tutorials. Yeah, another pad following on with the pad series. I said that this, um, uh, with the first one I was going to try and make a pad with all the synthesizers that I use. So this is the one for FM8. I've called it an evolving pad. It's quite a deep pad compared to the other ones. Uh, the MIDI clip, it's an octave down to the rest. It so sounded a bit better when it was played lower on the keyboard. So I'll show you the sound and then uh, I'll show you how I made it. There it is, nice deep pad. Uh, it's quite simple how you get the deepness of the pad mixed with the high ends. We've got two oscillators quite high up, one, one at the standard level, one an octave higher, and then we've got four a lot lower, an octave down. Well, we'll sort these out with the ratios in a bit, but for now we'll create a new sound. And uh, we'll get down to it. So, oscillator A, I changed to a TX Wave 7. Key sync it, key sync all six oscillators. We are going to use all six. Key sync them, it keeps a nice even tone. So we kept this on one, we just detuned it slightly to 9985. Keep the offset on dead zero. Oscillator B was a TX wave three. These are sort of hybrid waves crossed between two waves. I inverted this one, I pulled this one up to two. And then I'll just push it up to 3, 2.03. Oscillator C was a 1, 3, and a 5 square. This one I pulled down to 0 0.5. 0 0.5. That, as I say, that's key synced as well. Don't invert this one. D is just a standard square wave. This is going to give us some of the beef at the bottom end. I had this one on 0.4991. E was a third format. And this gives us a bit of uh, transience in the sound to make it sound a bit more interesting rather than just a rounded squarish sound. I say this one's key synced as well. Don't invert this one. And I had E at naught point five zero zero six. F I had on naught point five dead. This was a basic sine wave. I offset the phase of this up to point eighteen. D was to down to minus thirteen. C was naught point naught nine ten. B was 0.12, just to add a little bit of variance between the oscillators. So yeah, to get these uh, any sound from these oscillators, we're going to route all of them through Z, which is a filter. So right click Z, turn it on, and uh, route the filter full to the out. A goes full to the filter, B full to the filter, C and D all full to the filter. E, I had a little bit less volume at 69, 68, 69, and then F, I had only had at 25. This is a real deep subby element to the pad. So go ahead and click all five of these on. I'll show you the sound with five oscillators now, route it through the filter. did some more modulation, uh, if, well, if you're watching this I take it you know what FM8 can do, you can route the oscillators back into themselves to change the tone of the sound even more. So I routed A back into itself at 28, I routed F into B at 30, I routed F into E at 18. I routed E into D at 57. This seems really complicated, but it's really just trial and error with a synth like this. I 
tend not to push these too high when you're routing other filters into other filters because it can really start to distort the sound. I routed E into C at 19, D into C at 16, 16 and 17 will be fine. I routed B back into C at 69 as well. So yeah, that's it for the routings for now. I'll show you it again. So yeah, we need to go ahead and set the envelopes up now for this. I say, as it was a pad, I wanted to keep everything nice and simple, nice even tone. I did the the movement of the sound with the uh, filter modulation. So yeah, I linked all of, all of the op operators envelopes together from A to F. So if you click on the one what you want to adjust, click on the rest, it links them all together so they're exactly the same. So yeah, if we push the attack off to about 0.4, pull it down to about there, did decay to about 0.8 push this up so it's a positive curve from the attack to the decay ever so slightly and then give it a bit of release just up to about 1 so yeah all of those envelopes are exactly the same the only envelope what I did different was the filter envelope I wanted a really long attack on this so I opened the filter up over over the time that I wanted it to. So click on the filter for Z. The attack I pushed all the way out to just below 3. About 2.9, 2.8, something like that. And then quite a long decay as well, all the way out to about 6. but pull the level down so it comes up to that point and then gradually creases it back down to this point here and push the release out to about a little bit of release about 0.124 so yeah that's it for the envelopes we need to set the filter up now so if we click on Z um, I kept it in serial mode I did use both filters keep them both round to the left so they're a low pass filter boost the resonance of filter 1 to about 60 Push the spread of filter 2 around to about 37, 38. And the cut off of filter 1 back to 21. The envelope we just set up, we're going to use to modulate both of these. So push the envelope amount around to 56. That means it's going to start at the cutoff point where it is and it's going to open the filter around over this envelope time that we specified. So yeah, level on 100, pan dead center, velocity on full. And so the mix between the two filters, I went just to the left slightly, leaning towards filter 1, about there, about 48. So yeah, that's it for the filter. I'll show you it now with the filter in play and the envelopes. Any of the bit of routing I did in the actual operator section here, I routed the filter back into F just to give it a little bit more grit, up to about 16, 17. Okay, we're going to the master section now and set up some unison to make the sound sound a bit wider. So click on the master section. The master tune I kept on zero, obviously. The voices are, was on 16. The polyphony voices was on 16, so I pushed the voices up to 16 for the un, uh, for 12 for the unison. This makes it sound really wide. Push the detune of these unison sounds up to about 54, and the pan spread of these new voices to about. 89 
used a bit of analog as well because it's pad and analog pads are always the best pushed it up to about 71 72 73 something like that a little bit of digit as well just to give it an edge about 53 that's it for the master section so <laughs> Just the effects to go now then, um, I didn't really do much, bit of reveal, bit of chorus and some EQ and so we'll do a shelving EQ, all I did was just pulled the highs down, the very very highs, so as it didn't sound too hissy, I used a peak EQ to boost these frequencies, the very lows and the low mids didn't do anything with the cues or did actually boost them to about 60 both of them so you can play around with these frequencies just to suit whatever you wanted but because it was quite a deep pad I boosted the lows and the low mids so I used a bit of reverb uh, push the time up to about 60 keep the brightness on 50 keep the treble where it is and push the dry wet up to 65 quite a large reverb I used chorus delay Chorus helps any pad sound wider. I always use chorus on a pad if the synth has it. If not, I'll always put some on myself with being able to. It just adds to the unison, just makes a pad sound a bit more floaty. So yeah, what I'll do, I'll pull the high cut down to 6 or 8, something like that. Feedback up to about 6. Mod rate at 50, mod depth at 20, and the dry wet about 65. So not a lot of feedback, just let the chorus run in itself rather than it feeding back into itself. So yeah, that's pretty much the sound done. So I'll play it through a couple of times again for you so you can hear the pad finished. tell a difference with these two peaks in the sound to say it just really boosted them lower sounds that I wanted to, to cut through so yeah that's it lovely analog sounding pad um, the next one in the series the last one in the series is going to be with Rob Pappen Blue it is a lot like this it's the same sort of thing you've got six operators and loads of effects to mess around with so as always if you aren't subscribed please subscribe it does help me and the channel help me produce more vi more videos for all the synths that I use it's www.youtube.com forward slash Mr Nfox 22 and uh, if you're on Facebook or Google, Google Plus make sure you check my page out it's sound design tutorials okay hope you learned something again thanks a lot cheers <laughs>